Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Today we're going to talk about Linux Mint. Uh, so as you may be aware, Linux is on the rise. We saw an over 1% gain in market share for desktop Linux distributions this year. And that's, a, that's very impressive to see. That's a 33% increase. So a lot of people recommend Linux Mint to new Linux users. And while Linux, while Linux Mint is great, there's a few problems with it, and I don't think it's the right choice for a new user. Let's talk about that. So if you're looking to use Linux, you've probably had people say, hey, go ahead and use Linux Mint. You know, it's, it's the best choice for a new person. I'm going to say not so fast there. Uh, so we're going to explore some of the reasons why Linux Mint may not be the right choice for a new Linux user. So Linux Mint has a reputation for being user-friendly and very much like Windows, which is ideal for someone switching over from Windows, right? Well, although it does have many user-friendly attributes, I would go as far as to argue that a lot of its architectural design ideas are not welcoming to a new user. There are definitely positive aspects to using Linux Mint. I'm not trying to say it's a bad distribution. I'm not trying to say no one should use it. What I am trying to say is that new users would probably be better served with something else. So first off are the security concerns. Linux Mint has an interesting update policy. So reading from my notes here, uh, Linux Mint has been criticized for its approach to security updates, particularly regarding the Linux kernel and other critical packages. The distribution tends to be conservative with updates and often holds back newer kernels or packages until they've been thoroughly tested. While this can enhance stability, it also leaves systems vulnerable to security issues that would have been patched in newer releases. So in comparison to upstream distributions like Ubuntu, uh, it inherits Ubuntu's updates. However, Linux Mint often delays these updates further, prioritizing stability over promptness. This delay can result in users running older, potentially insecure versions of software. Linux Mint's Update Manager may not install all available updates automatically, particularly kernel updates. The rationale behind this policy is to prevent updates from causing issues with system stability or usability, which can be particularly problematic for novice users. And there's, there's a potential for a security gap here. This policy has led to concerns that users may not be adequately informed about critical security updates, leaving their systems more exposed to vulnerabilities than users of other distributions. So Linux Mint places a significant emphasis on giving user choice. The whole idea behind their update approach is to let the user run updates when it works for them. And that's a problem. These things really should be automatic, and hear me out. Now, if you're new to Linux and you've never used it before, and you install Linux Mint, well, it's not going to update everything automatically. And I know that there's a little pop-up that appears in the system tray. It's like, hey, update me, update me. Uh, but the thing about that is that it's very easily ignored, and a novice user may not know what to do when that pops up. So Linux Mint's developers try to strike a balance between stability and security. And I would argue that it fares too much on the side of uh, stability while sacrificing some security. When compared with distributions such as Ubuntu or Fedora, which have much more aggressive and automatic update cycles, you really seem to see how Linux Mint lags behind in these important areas. Also, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and its reliance on Ubuntu can be a double-edged sword especially regarding the update schedule. Potential compatibility issues or delays in the latest software and security updates might be due to their, to their usage of Ubuntu LTS. All right, so let's talk about support. You're a new Linux user, you need to get some support, something's broken, you don't know what to do with it, where do you go? Well, a lot of people will point you towards the Linux Mint forums. But the thing is, because you're using a niche distribution, there's not as many people on those forms. 
there's not as many knowledgeable people on there who can help you fix your issues. So you might be better served with something like Ubuntu where there's a much more deep well of community support. Also, their official documentation is kind of lacking. Uh, there's not a lot in their official documentation to help me when I run into issues. And I know it's a skill issue, right? But again, if you're a new user, then you need some good documentation to get you going where you need to be. All right, and then there's hardware compatibility. So because Linux Mint is usually using an older kernel, it's not up to date enough to run all of the latest hardware. And what that means is that you have someone who's trying Linux for the first time and their first experience with it is that it is totally borked on their system. That's not a good experience. Also, there's an argument to be made that Linux Mint has been lacking in innovation. So what I mean by that is the Cinnamon desktop has been pretty much stagnant for years now. And I understand things behind the curtain are getting updated and changed. Uh, but, you know, people say Linux Mint is like Windows, right? That's why we recommend it to new people. Well, the thing is, it's a lot like Windows 7, right? It's not like Windows 10. It's not like Windows 11. It's like very old Windows. And I don't think that's a particularly good impression to be making on people who are new to Linux. All right, so what alternatives are there for new users? Well, you've got Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the OS that Linux Mint is based off of. And Ubuntu does a really good job of keeping things secure. It's very user friendly. And although it's not very much like Windows, I think that it still gives a better experience to the new user than Mint does. Fedora is another great choice. Now, you're either going to love it or hate it because of that GNOME desktop. But I would argue that for a new user, having such a clean experience can make a really good first impression. All right, so there are a few reasons why you might not want to recommend Linux Mint to a new user. First of all, it has issues with security. You know, it's always running older packages that are out of date. And generally speaking, it's not up to snuff when it comes to comparisons between other distributions. Additionally, it looks like Windows 7. And when you're, when you're using Linux for the first time, if your impression is that, oh, this is old, you know, it's, it's just not a good look. So in my final thoughts, I would recommend you picking a different distribution to recommend to new users when they come asking. You know, if they want something like Windows, they've got KDE, and KDE is a hell of a lot more mature and better than Cinnamon. And if someone wants something maybe new, something fresh, some new ideas, well, then there's no. So if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, leave a comment down below. I'd love to see your thoughts. Let's keep it civil. Uh, but I am interested in hearing both sides of the story here. And if you're a subscriber, then leave a comment down below about any videos you might want to see me make in the future. I love putting these together for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this one. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps my channel out. And remember, I'm not taking sponsors. I'm not getting money from ads. I'm doing this just for the subs and likes. So if you could leave one of those, I'd deeply appreciate it. Anyway, my name is Patrick. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.